mich. Ich weiß es nicht. Sieht er mich? Ich weiß es nicht. Hört er mich? Er liebt mich.
What the fuck is up with this fucking dead ass chat? Honestly, every time I start the goddamn stream, it's like we're starting to notice a pattern. Let me tell you guys something. You gotta keep the energy high in this fucking room. I don't care how many fucking people there are. You gotta keep the energy high, because guess what? They're coming at us with everything they got. They're coming at us with everything they got, motherfuckers. They are. I got some shit in my throat. They are coming at us with everything they got, motherfuckers. You got to keep the energy high. You want to know why? Because willpower, resistance, just being able to say some rational common sense shit means you have to plant your feet in the goddamn fucking mud and defend where you stand because they will oh come after God. your motherfucking ass. Thank you so much, Psyop Shorty. We off to a good start. Okay. Okay, we're on that Mr. Krabs grind set. Okay, we're on that grind set. Even just to be able to defend some common sense shit, you gotta fucking put up a hell of a fight. Don't you ever forget it. You say, Haas, but I'm tired. I'm I don't care that you're tired. Haas, I'm tired. I'm tired. What excuse is that? They're not tired. See, let me tell you. the. I'm gonna tell you the way of Haas. I'm gonna tell you how you do this. For them... To spew their lies and to spread their bullshit comes effortlessly. They have an unlimited reservoir of energy to do that shit. You motherfuckers, you need to start having some unlimited energy. Because if you don't have the energy for it, you don't believe in it. And that's the truth. So when I start these goddamn streams, I want a Sun Gorilla March. Let's see that Sun Gorilla March right now. Let's see that Sun Gorilla March right now. If you don't have the energy, they do, motherfucker. They've got the energy and they're bringing it to us. Speaking of the devil, I was invited to a Twitter space today. Many of you may have shown up to it. We're going to see if it's recorded yet or if it's still going. If it's recorded, I can show you what happened. I don't just have to describe it to you, right? But I was on a Twitter space recently with Soy Boy Sebastian Gorka. Guy named Sebastian Gorka, right? Now, I didn't know how these who these people were. It was Mario Narfal's, whatever his name is, Twitter space. And there was about 10,000 people listening. And they brought me on to start talking about China. So what did I do? I, I told the plain truth. I said, China's not trying to replace the USA. I said, America's foreign interventions are suicidal. I said, the American system, so-called American system isn't sustainable in the long term. Now, as far as I'm concerned, these are pretty commonsensical positions. I don't think this is, I mean, even across the political aisle, it shouldn't be that much contested, right? But people kept harping in on the details of China's political system, and I said, what, China's not trying to impose their system on us, though, right? And they kept going, you know, and I was like, you know what? You keep talking about democracy and free market values. In many ways, China's a more decentralized... They, they're like, oh, this is autocracy versus democracy. I said, no, it's not. This is about a oligarchy versus a popular, quote-unquote, autocracy, which is like you, what you want to call it, right? But they were very disrespectful in that Twitter space. A lot of people, all bitch-ass people in there were very disrespectful. And you could... If you listen to it, and I hope we're going to be able to listen to it together, but if you listen to it, they... Here's what's crazy. They couldn't let me get a word in. I was like 1v5. People with 500,000 followers, they couldn't even let me get a word in. Like every two seconds, they just... I couldn't even say anything, really, right? I kept getting muted and all this shit. And it made me realize, you know, we are MAGA communists, and I am a patriot for my country, America, right? But we are in denial as a country. I'm sorry. We Americans are in denial as a fucking country. I mean, look, my patriotism is a mature patriotism. I have the patriotism of someone who says our country is fucked and we need to salvage the pieces and build something from that. Thank you so much, Aaron. Appreciate you so. Holy shit. It's Mr. Krabs time. Yeah. We are off to a great start today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's set that Mr. Krabs type shit. Okay. 
But uh, very disrespectful. And then this bitch ass Sebastian Gorka. He actually got offended by the shit I was saying because I said there was no, you know, they were saying, oh, what about the Uyghur genocide? And then I said, well, you know, I don't know if I could say it on YouTube, but I'm sure you ima can imagine what I said. And Sebastian Gorka lost his shit. He was like, he just started insulting me. He went, this guy's a clown. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This guy's a clown. I didn't, I didn't know that much about Sebastian Gorka, to be honest. So I looked him up, and I did some research on him. This dude, this British guy, Sebastian Gorka, who's from the British Empire, he's not an American. Repeat that. Sebastian Gorka is not an American. I am a son of the soil. I was born in this land. I was born and raised in Michigan. When I was a kid, I was going to American apple orchards. I was going up north as an American. I went camping. I am an actual fucking American. I've gone hunting. I'm a real American. I'm actually born in this country. I don't know where the fuck Sebastian Gorkuk is from. He's clearly not from our country, just from the way he talks. Guy's from Britain. That's okay. You can be British, just, you know. Or he's Hungarian, apparently. Okay. So he's a Hunga He's a globetrotter, basically. He's from Hunga Hungary, and then he went to Britain, and then he comes to America and tries to tell us what we should do with our military and our government. He's a So, but get this, he's always been a fucking neocon all his life. Sebastian Gorka, there's not a single example of Sebastian Gorka not being a neocon. He's always been a neocon. He was 100% for the Iraq war. He said, okay, well, he regretted it? No. He was buddies with Mike Pompeo in Trump's administration. Dude is the definition of a neocon. He is a fucking neocon. Thank you so much, Rapture. Our patriotism invades from the future. We are speaking to tombstones informing them of their future passing. We come from the step to enlighten all. Exactly. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But, you know, Sebastian Gorka has always been a neoconservative. He's always been with NATO. He's And then if you and look at his present day positions... He's so pro-intervention on everything, not just China, but also on Russia and also on the Middle East. But then here's the kicker. If you look at what he says, he goes, oh, I'm not a neocon. I'm against the neocons. And he uses it as a pejorative. Dude, your present day positions on every single fucking issue are neocon positions. And I can't believe this fucking goddamn cockroach, this rat is skirting his way by, calling himself a MAGA America First guy. What is MAGA or America First about you? Every single tangible position you have, Sebastian Gorkuk, you fat bitch, entails America intervening in the Middle East, China, or Russia to be the world police. How does that put America first? So he talks with his fucking British accent coming from the... Hungarian section of the British Empire, I guess. And he tries to boss Base. us around. Thank you so much, Aaron. When are we getting merch? He tries to boss us around and tell us what to do. I'm, I'm going to get to that, Aaron. I've been talking to... Uh, I might be able to show you the merch right now. So give me, put that on... Uh, let me see if it's actually completed and they've sent me something. Nope. They're still doing the sample. They're still working on that. They are still working on that sample. It's been a few days. It should be another day or two. But listen. This guy's just wearing... He's openly just trying to blend in. He's a Trotskyite. Sebastian Gorkuk is a Trotskyite and an interventionist. In every tangible position, he's an interventionist. And he's a neocon. He's no different from Pompeo. Except he's virtue signaling in favor of Trump. Listen, Trump. If you want to have a shot at politics, Trump, you need to recognize a fucking snake when you see one. And Gore Cuck is a snake. He's a guy who's trying to infiltrate and blend in with MAGA. He doesn't share any MAGA values. And let me, I mean, with that being said, I need to explain something to people about what it means to be an American patriot. Because a lot of people happen to be confused about it. I was in that Twitter space, and the way these people were talking about China reminded me 
about how cavemen must have talked about future time travelers from the year 3000. They were so primitive and ignorant. And it's just like these people don't realize your civilization has already been conquered. You are already an inferior civilization you're already destroyed china has already fucking lapped you and you don't see that i'm sick of american coping i'm done with having patience with american coping if you're gonna sit here and talk about international relations yes the american system is destroyed uh, the era of americanism is done stop fucking coping our country is becoming a third world shithole. Everyone's doped up on fentanyl. Our infrastructure is rotting. We have no manufacturing or productive base. We have the most incompetent, dysfunctional fucking government of any advanced, so-called advanced country in the world. We're on the cusp of a civil war. Nothing fucking works anymore. And we are, re we are right now experiencing runaway inflation and we have our hands tied in every corner of the fucking world, and we can't sustain it. Can we wake up? Wake up! This country is fucking dead. I'm sick of people coping about it. Nice. America's done. Great Thank you so much, Darrell. Stood your ground against U.S. empire. Yeah, stamps. but um, I need people to fucking realize this because there are so many people coping about it. It's unreal. Dude, how many of you feel we're a functioning country? We're not. It's like it's like that Roadrunner thing where we're running off the fucking cliff and we didn't look down yet and we haven't realized we're done. It's over. It's fucking over. This country is not sustain. This is not a civilization. This is not a sustainable country anymore. Okay? People are talking in that Twitter space like they're living in 2000 and the year 2000. They're living in dreamland. I, you need to admit this. China is more advanced than the U.S. in almost every regard. Really, in almost every regard. Every single system they have beats ours by miles. The only difference is a matter of time. They're going to need more time to catch up, but they have already defeated us. Their mode of production is more advanced. Their civilization is more advanced. The average Chinese kid is like a fucking math genius. The average American kid is having their mind rotted on TikTok. And while we talk about gendered bathrooms and a bunch of frivolous, stupid bullshit, the Chinese are talking about going to Mars. But we are not the world the leader House anymore. Thank you so much, average. But we are not a fucking world leader. The American century is over. And none of this is fucking sustainable. Look around. Go outside. Everything is dysfunctional about our country. Even traffic police don't fucking work anymore. This country is totally chaotic, dysfunctional. Crime is through the fucking roof. And I'm not even mentioning our major cities. Go walk around New York City. Go walk around Los Angeles. You tell me we are the leader of the world and we're still living in an American century. Go walk downtown Los Angeles and come back and tell me that this is still the American century and, oh, but China's got the Uyghurs in the camps and, oh, but, but America's... Dude, I'm sorry. It's already lost. You know what I want you to do? I want, I want you to play the video game Death Stranding. You know in the beginning of Death Stranding... The song they played. What was that song they played? Let's. What's that song? Death Stranding so soundtrack. <sighs> this is America. I want you guys to wake up. I want you to wake up, stop coping, and look outside. L open your window and look outside right now. Open your fucking window and look outside. That battle, ladies and gentlemen. Please. Thank you so much, Voidberg. Crime went up in San Francisco by over 700%. Our infrastructure That battle has already apart. been lost. Nobody wants to Look ride outside. public subways or buses. Please. It's fucked. Please. Thank you, TK. China is the modern Jerusalem, and we shall learn from their example. It's the guys. The battle was lost years ago. 
Look Based. outside. Thank you, Chris Morocco. Gorka was a product of the NATO Defense College in Rome. He was a research fellow before coming to the USA and promoting war on terror anti-Islam. Thank you. Well, guys, look outside. Look outside, guys. Look around you. I'm sorry, but the jig is up. Thank you so much, the king. Republicans cut necessary social spending. Democrats promote social fascism and no third parties can win. Time has run out. Thank you so much, Lionel. Wake up, guys. Stop coping. America's been lost. It's been lost. And we're awakening to it. It's over. It's been over. It's been over. Are you awake? You're finally awake. You're finally awake. It's like the Elder Scrolls. You're finally awake. Well, you've been sleeping for a long time, and I want you to awaken to the country you're living in. You're living in a defeated nation. You're living in a country that isn't aware that it's over yet. And we're going on like business as usual, but every single one of us understands that none of this is sustainable in any foreseeable future. Nobody can actually imagine a future in which America can go on as it is now. Nothing about this system, nothing about this country, and nothing about this society is sustainable. The country is being plagued with mass shootings almost every single week. People are taking guns and just massacring random innocent people. There's no civilization between us. There's no community. There's no sense of solidarity. There's no sense of togetherness. None of it exists. This whole system is one giant bureaucracy that's declared war against the people. And even the people don't know where the fuck they are. Why? Because everybody's stranded. So look out your window and look outside. You're living in a stranded desert. You're not living in the world's most powerful country. You're living in a desert. This country, it's only a matter of time before it gets really fucking serious. But this battle has already been lost. All of you MAGA people who are trying to save America, I'm sorry to tell you, but your battle has been lost years and years ago. There's nothing to save. It's all ash. That battle has been lost a long, long time ago. America can't be saved. Sorry to tell you. You're not going to stop the rise of China. You're not going to stop the changes that are coming. Changes that have not been seen for hundreds of years. So why do I call myself MAGA? What does it really mean to make America great again? It means we have to rediscover America. We have to pick up that old tattered flag that our forefathers left behind in the shed, in that old wooden shed that nobody wants to look to anymore because it doesn't have the might of the British Empire defending it. You want to make America great again? Then dust off that old Betty Cro Dust off that old flag. You want to bring America back? You want to make America great again? Then you got to go in that old wooden shed and dust off that old Betsy Ross flag. The one that nobody's been looking at or paying attention to for almost a hundred years. The flag that represents our common liberties. The flag that represents what our founding fathers fought and died for. That's been forgotten. It doesn't exist in our institutions anymore. You have to go and dust off that Union flag. 
that the American soldiers took into battle to defeat the disgusting and vile system of slavery and bury it into the dustbin of history. You've got to remember something about this country that's been long forgotten because ever since we've become a fucking empire, we've lost our way. And nobody wants to admit it, but the America that you're familiar with and the America you know is dead. The America you wake up to every single day thinking, oh, this is the America of McDonald's and Apple, and this is the America of Disney and Marvel, and oh, we're the big military might, oh, George... That's fucking dead. George W. Bush's America is dead. Ronald Reagan's America is dead. You want to know what? I spit on its fucking grave. You want to make America great again? You got to unleash something ancient, something primordial, something really old that nobody's looking at and nobody gives a shit about anymore. You care about America? Then look at the America you left behind. You, Sebastian Gore Cook, you fucking slave of the British Empire, you fucking neocon fat bitch, you goddamn fucking coward, running from Hungary to Britain to God knows where the fuck else, coming onto our country like an oversized fat rat bitch. You want to fucking care about America? Then you got to care about the America that Americans are living in every single day. That's the America of East Palestine, Ohio. That's the America of the Rust Belt people who were left behind. That's the America of the coal miners in West Virginia. That's the America you have to care about. You fat bitch. We are not going to be slaves of your new British Empire. You are not going to send the sons and daughters of the American Revolution into Russia, into China, into Iran to die for your global British Empire, to die for your Zionism in the Middle East. Americans have had it enough of that americans have had it up to here with america quote unquote your america your united states it's a fucking sham and it's a fraud america has become an enemy of americans and if you want to make america great again you got to make it american again we have to return to our revolutionary roots, the ones that overthrew empires instead of becoming them. And that America, my friends, is not an America anyone's going to be able to appreciate until the whole goddamn system comes tumbling down. I'm not here to defend the America that exists before you. That's already dead and gone, and it's never coming back. When this country is reduced to rubble, and this country is reduced to ash, and when this country goes down to the shitter, then you're going to realize and appreciate what really makes this fucking country great. Then you're going to remember what made America a real country and a real people. I'm not here for the America of George W. Bush and Sebastian Gorka, those fat, fraudulent pieces of shit that are lying to you. They're selling you a cope. They're selling you a fucking lie that you can salvage this empire and somehow everything's going to go as normal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to stop Russia. We're going to stop China. We're going to stop Iran. We're going to stop Brazil. We're going to stop Mexico. We're going to stop South Africa. We're going to stop this. We're going to bomb this. We're going to bomb that. We're going to bomb this. Go to war for Israel. Die for Israel. Do this. Do that. We're going to do it. That's over, Sebastian, you fat bitch. You coping bitch. You're selling Americans a lie. You're selling them a lie. You're selling them a fucking lie. Stop coping. Stop fucking coping. You know what? China is better than America. Stop lying about it. They are. What about America is better than China? We have mass shootings. Is it the fact that our fucking country's dysfunctional? We don't have any good, high-paying jobs? Or is that how all of our daughters are turning into fucking whores? What about America is better than China? Fucking tell me. Please, enlighten me. What about America is better than China? We have freedom. Freedom to do what? To be called a domestic terrorist and thrown in fucking prison for going to the Capitol? 
What about America is better than China? Tell me. Because they have censorship over there and we don't? Really? We don't have censorship? When banks will close down your fucking account for having the wrong opinion, let alone big tech the only way you can even have a goddamn voice as a citizen anymore? You're telling me we don't have censorship? Oh, because we're not authoritarian, really? Is that why every real fucking dissident who actually manages to challenge things, when push comes to shove, eventually gets killed by the CIA and they admit it? What the fuck makes us better than China? Go look at China's cities. They are better than us. Stop fucking coping. China is better than America. I'm sick of people fucking coping about it. The best we can hope for is to be a great country again. We can hope for that. But we're not that right now. There's nothing to defend. America's a shithole compared to China. And I stand by that. It doesn't matter how poor Chinese people are in the remote villages. They have civilization. They have community. They have dignity. They have norms. They don't have mass shooters. They don't have this insanity of gender ideology. They don't have this crazy shit grooming children. and say They don't have all this crazy shit we do. They're healthy. They may not have all the latest hamburgers and iPhones and shit. But they're happier than us, I guarantee it. Stop fucking lying and coping and saying America's the best country on Based. earth. It's not. The worthy sons of liberty. Thank you so much, Janar. It's really fucking not. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but yeah, China is better than America. Good, give me one fucking reason America's oh better than God. China. There isn't one. Thank you, Destiny's Crackula. There's not a single city. Uh, you know what? I'm willing to bet there's not a single street in the People's Republic of China that is as much of a shithole as downtown Los Angeles. And if you don't fucking believe me, go travel to China and see for yourself. <sighs> they are better than us. They are so much more advanced than us, you would not even fucking believe. And it's not just the secret technology they have. It's not even just the fucking technology they have. Their system, their paradigm, their philosophy is like, we are ants, we are bugs compared to them. They are like space aliens compared to us. Their underlying worldview and philosophy, even the Chinese themselves have no fucking idea how much more advanced than they are than us. Even the Chinese are not as confident in their own country. They literally wouldn't even believe how much more advanced they are than us. And they are. Their entire technological paradigm is more advanced. Their culture is more advanced. The average Chinese person, in terms of basic literacy and knowledge of the world and science and just basic things, outclasses the average American 100 fold there's no jungle in china there's no fucking rampant criminality and violence and thuggery they don't have any of that stupid shit there's a reason we have the highest incarceration rate in the fucking world because we're not a civilized country you don't go to china and see all this fucking footage being uploaded of old women being beaten up in the street and shit they don't fucking have it i am sorry to tell you stop fucking coping china is better than america period and then people might say okay haas why don't you move into China? Why don't you go move to China? Because, motherfucker, I am an American, which means if we go down, I'm going down too. You think I want to go to Los Angeles and step in shit? You think I want crackheads on the street to be attacking me? You think I want to live in a dysfunctional shithole where the average person is so fucking stupid they can't even put China on a fucking map? You think I want to live in a country where people's dreams have been so depleted that they can't even have any hope for the future anymore? You think I want to live in a country where the rate of suicide is going up? You think I want to live in a country where everyone's getting doped up on drugs and fentanyl and heroin and getting addicted to shit? I'm not saying this from a perspective of arrogance. I don't think I'm better than anyone. These people in our country who are hurting, it hurts me too. 
The thing that's hurting our country is hurting me too. Because I am an actual fucking American who loves their country. But if you actually love your country as an American, if you actually love this country, then you need to come to your sober senses and realize we lost this battle a long fucking time ago. And only when we finally realize that can we begin the work of rebuilding and making this country great again. Nobody else is going to fucking tell you this, by the way. This country has been destroyed. It's been destroyed. It's not functional. There's no unity among people. What even makes Americans Americans anymore? What unifies us as a country? Really think about it. What even holds us together anymore? Nothing. It's all a fucking veneer. It's all a fucking veneer. I want America to be a great country. I want us to have great, powerful, and beautiful cities. I want us to be a fucking super industrialized country with advanced technology, prosperity, and happiness for all. We're not going to fucking get there if we keep lying and coping. You know what America is? It's a fentanyl addict. You will never cure a fentanyl addict by pandering to them, telling them what they want to hear, and feeding into their addiction. America needs to go cold turkey. Because you know what? This buffoon, this fat bastard, Sebastian Gorka, he's feeding you a bunch of dope. He's a fucking fentanyl dealer feeding Americans a bunch of fucking dope. Lying to your fucking face, telling you that MAGA means going along with this jerry-rig of a fucking empire that's bound to collapse one day or another. And you gotta be the biggest sucker of all to, in addition to being a fentanyl addict, voluntarily go and die for Sebastian Gorka's war against China. They dope you up on drugs, they steal your dreams away, they steal the dreams of your children, they poison your environment, they destroy your social cohesiveness, they make you fucking miserable, they make you put on a fucking dress and you can't be a man anymore, and then what? They're gonna send you to fucking die like a meat puppet to go fucking die against China, to have your body riddled with bullets and bombs for the ruling class. That's the cold, hard truth. If you don't wake up and realize that our elites are driving us into a disaster, into a war, not only is our country lost, you and your family will be lost too. Because let me tell you, nuclear war will come for us all. And China and Russia may rebuild from the ashes of that war because they actually have a cohesive civilization and we don't. It'll be the end of America forever. We still have hope. We are not past the point of no return. Our country has been defeated. Our country has been destroyed. But we can rebuild. We can make our country great. We just need to realize the disease that's taken hold of us. And that disease is the legacy of the rotten British Empire that America was founded on defying, not emulating and trying to become. We have time. We can make this country great. We can rebuild. We can clear the way and make a truly great civilization. An America reborn. An America that works with the peoples and civilizations of the world. An America ruled by the working people. The America that we've always, always dreamed of, that every generation's dreamed of, but has never been able to achieve. We can be the America that the first cowboys going out west were dreaming of when they were in the middle of the fucking desert and tumbleweed was drifting their way and the only thing keeping them forward was the dream of a great, prosperous civilization. We can be that civilization. We have time. War with China and war with Russia will bury America into the dustbin of history forever. And that's the truth. And I'm not happy to say that. 
By the way, I'm trying to stop this war with everything I got, and I know I'm not going to be successful, but I do it anyway. So as much people as possible can hear my fucking message. I love this country. We have a good thing going for us historically. This country can be great. We're going to put it all down the shitter when we decide we're going to go to war against the world. The last two times a country decided to declare war on the world, what happened to that country? Hitler tried to go to war against the world. What the fuck happened? Germany was divided for the rest of that century. Germany's barely still recovering from that. You can't do that. You can't go to war with China, Russia, Iran, Brazil, and whoever else, Mexico. You can't do it. I'm telling you, the jig is up. These people are madmen. We're losing the plot. Our economy went down to shit. We're not an inspiration to anyone anymore. Nobody fucking respects us anymore. And why would they? And now your answer to that is to grab a big stick and try to go to war against the world? You can't fucking do that. Everyone knows by the basic laws of social intercourse. Everybody fucking knows. The guy who decides he's going to fight everyone on the schoolyard, he's lost the fucking plot. And there's no way for him to fucking win. You can't declare war on the world. It's not possible. That's exactly right. They are gambling with our country. They're gambling with it. They don't care about America. They're going to put it on the altar of their globalist empire. They're fucking at these bankers and these financiers. They don't give a shit about this country. You think they care about you, your parents, or your grandparents, or your family? You think they give a goddamn sniveling shit about you? You're an ant to them. You're less than a fucking cockroach to these fucking people. This country is just another casino for them. And after they're done destroying this country, they'll move on to another one. Like it's nothing. Like they're termites. These capitalists. Based in Wall Street in the city of London. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care what happens to this country. You have to stand up and defy them. You have to defy their media. You have to defy their institutions. You have to defy their state. And that takes courage. Because when you come out and say the shit I'm saying, they're going to call you a traitor. They're going to say, oh, you're a Chinese agent. You're a Russian agent. You're a traitor to this country. I'm not a traitor to this fucking country. I'm one of the only voices that speaks out in defense of this country. This battered, abused, tarnished, and forgotten country. That country has long been forgotten. All you have left is the veneer of an America. Their America. Their United States. It's all a fucking sham. It's a casino for the fucking bankers. Their media. Their military institution. Oh, but I... Base. Thank you, MK. Appreciate you. Yeah. Oh, but, but I watch Top Gun, House. I watch fucking Hollywood's movie where America's the good guys. And we're... Shut the fuck up! You know what Top Gun was? It was opium. It was fentanyl. Oh, but I watch Top Gun, House. Can't we be Top... No, we're not going to be Top Gun America. We will never be that again. We were never that, by the way. But we will never, ever fucking be that. I promise you we won't. I promise you we won't. That movie was made to trick idiots like you into supporting war. You sound like a traitor. I think you're a fucking traitor. Look at the state of our actual country. You sit here and tell me I'm the traitor. I'm the traitor, but our people rot while the bankers enrich themselves to drive us into war against China. Why the fuck is China supposed to be my enemy? Why is China my enemy? Why is Russia my enemy? We're going to have to pick sides soon. I will never be on the side of this rotten system. If you are a slave 
and your slave owner is beefing with someone else, that's not your fucking battle. Your battle is the emancipation of your people. Your battle is to lead your people into victory. Your battle is the liberation of your country. Not going off to fucking die in God knows where Timbuktu to enrich the fat pockets of these parasite bloodsucker capitalists. Their system's coming tumbling down. And the only way they're going to save their ass, see, it's a casino. And now they're going to enlist you to go and die so they can recover their fucking gamble. They gambled and they lost. And you're going to go die for them? Really? They fucking gambled and they lost. They destroyed our country. So you're going to go die for them? And you're calling me the traitor? The traitors are the bloodsuckers and the capitalists who have used and abused our country like some ragged whore for nearly half a century. Those are the traitors. If America goes down, I'm going down too. I was born and raised in this country. I know no other country than America. I have no other people than the American people. I'm not telling you this from Based. Beijing. Thank you so much, the Latvian. people cheering on a war with Russia and China are mad. A war like that would end in complete nuclear destruction, suffering on an unimaginable scale. And that's what I'm trying scale. to say. I'm not telling you this from Beijing. I'm not telling you this from Moscow. I'm not telling you this from my 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 parents native village in southern lebanon i'm telling you this from michigan from the mitten state michigan that's where i'm telling you this from i have no other people than these people than the american people i have no other country there's no other soil anywhere on earth that i am native to there's no air anywhere on earth that i can breathe and say is mine than the air of this country I'm telling you this because I'm in this fucking ship and it's sinking. And I'm going to sink too if we don't fucking fix it. I'm not telling you this gloating and being happy at the destruction of America. Because I'm an American too. The more we go on denying how much of a fucking mess we've gotten ourselves into... The more we go on denying that, yes, this century is China's, and there's nothing we can do about that. That's faked. America's not God. The best we can hope for is to be a dignified, sovereign, and free people. China did what no one else could, and their story is the story of the 20th and 21st century. China has always been the world power. As far back as you want to go to the Silk Road, they've always been the powerhouse of the world. We need to join the people of the world as one country among other countries. We need to be a country that can coexist with other countries. Of course we're going to defend our borders. Of course we're going to defend our homes. Of course we're going to defend our people. With our lives we should defend our own people. As any people should. But this U.S. empire, this American empire is dead and gone. And anyone who tells you otherwise, including this fat pig bitch Sebastian Gorka with his British fucking accent coming to America telling us what to do, is lying to you. Sebastian Gorka is a coward and a fucking liar. He is an enemy of the American people and he's a neocon. The shit I tell you is a hard pill to swallow. I could be like these fraudulent fake MAGA cucks and sit here and say, oh yeah, Top Gun, we're going to beat China. We're going to, yeah, we got to compete with China and beat China. Let's go. Yeah, we're going to beat China. That's fentanyl. That's dope. They're doping you up on bullshit. 
They are doping you up on bullshit. Take it from me. China won this battle a long fucking time ago. A long time ago. Now we want to say we're going to blow up the entire planet because we can't fucking take it on the chin because we're going to be a sore loser. China did what no other country could. Please. Thank you so much, Diogenes. We have already hit the iceberg. Infrared is just handing out life vests and looking for a lifeboat. That's what I'm trying to say. And then you Please. tell them we hit the lifeboat. Bars. Thank you so much, Violet. China had their century of humiliation. Every world power went to China and divided them up. They liberated their country. They started from nothing. If you knew how fucking poor they were. If you knew how poor they were. How little they had. Nobody used to give a fuck about China. But they sat there and they planned. And they patiently crafted a plan. Patiently. Step by step. And they said... We have a fucking plan. The world will know our story. And now we know. China's rise is irreversible. And I am not threatened by it. I don't see their rise as a threat to me. I'm inspired by it. If you know the story of the Chinese people, you'd be inspired by it too. And maybe we can learn a thing or two from them. Because that's the story oh of a defeated God. and humiliated people. Thank you so much, Viajo. Who rose from the ashes and achieved greatness. You're not entitled to greatness. God doesn't choose who's going to be great and who's not. Just because you want to or you feel like it. If we want to be a country of fucking losers, we will be losers. And we will never be great. If someone's doing better than you, you have two options. Humble yourself and take notes to learn from them or be an arrogant little bitch and say, no, no, I have to be better than them. But you haven't earned it. What makes you better than them? You haven't earned it. What do you have to show for it? There's a few things we can learn from China. Like how to survive a goddamn apocalypse. Because that's what that century of humiliation Please. was for them. Thank you so you much, the Mason. American Lenin. Appreciate you. Look, America's a great country. You're coming from a communist with a capital C. And I'm telling you, America, historically, is a very unique and great country. We are a country that is purely based on the anticipation of something that's not yet here. We're a country that's always been based on anticipating the future. And we could be a great, mighty country that alongside the people of the world anticipate and works for a brighter future for all mankind. But first of all, for Americans, which is what we've neglected, we could work with Russia and China to fight and build and work for a better future. Because believe it or not, China learned from America. They learned a lot from us. China, the first Chinese revolutionaries, Sun Yat-sen, during the Chinese revolution of the past century, even before Mao, they looked at America for inspiration. We used to inspire a lot of people. We gave them hope that they could build a future that wasn't yet here. That your dreams, the things you dream about, could become real if you work for them. That's not going anywhere. We need to fucking realize what we've been missing all along. We've been missing the roots. We've been missing the civilization. We've been missing the glue that ties a people together. All this time we've been trying to build the future. We never managed to sit down and try and think about how we've been neglecting and ignoring the basis of that, which is people. We've neglected and ignored the American people. We are a country. We're not just an idea like Joe Biden says. Joe Biden says, oh, America's the only country that's based on an idea. I beg to fucking differ. We are not based on an idea. 
We are a country, a proper country with people living in it. We do have a culture. Yeah, we're in bad shape and in disrepair, but we're not a fucking idea. We're a very real sobering reality. And we need to start paying attention to that. This is not a Disney movie. This is a real country with real problems and very real people. All of our brothers and sisters who have succumbed to addiction and despair, we've been ignoring them. All of the people who've given up on life were getting groomed by the FBI to do horrific things. We've given up on them. We've given up on our youth. We've been chasing this idea and this dream at the expense of what's right what's been right under our nose which is our fellow american people we need to start working for our people and then we can dream bigger than we've ever dreamed before and as far as i'm concerned i dream of a party i dream of a force i dream of an army that works for the american people i dream I dream. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Will America need its own century of it humiliation? It may just. It may just. But let's never give up. Let's never stop fighting. Because even if it needs a century of humiliation, it's never too early to start trying to big, pick up the pieces. Even if it's going to take a century, we have to start now. We may die and never see the country we want to live in. But to dedicate your life to that, I can think of no more noble of a life than that. We may never see it. We need to have one last dream, one last manifest destiny in this country. And that is to build a force that is to build an army. That is to build a party that for the first time inscribes upon its banner the will of America's working people. I dream that for the first time, maybe in a century or more, we will have a force. We will have a symbol of hope that represents the aspirations of our people. Not Sebastian Gorkuk, not the neocons, not the fucking politicians, not the bankers, not the capitalists and oligarchs, not the bloodsuckers, not the people in Washington, and not the people in the city of London, and not the people in NATO's high command, but the people here at home. The people here at home, living in their communities, dwelling in their communities, getting by day after day. Who will speak for them? Who will fight for them? That's what we need to do. I'm not promising you a utopia. I'm promising you a war. And we need to volunteer ourselves to fight that war. We're not going to go to war with China. We're going to go to war against this rotten ruling class that's been a bloodsucker on our country for as long as any of us could ever possibly have remembered. I don't promise you a utopia. I'm not going to promise you you're going to live in a paradise. I promise you hardship. I promise you struggle. I promise you a war. You can either stand on your two feet and live a dignified life, or you can go down as a bitch like Sebastian Gore Cuck. Take your fucking choice. I know many of you look at me and say, what's this foreign guy saying? I know I'm foreign. I know I'm an Arab. I know what this looks like. I know what it looks like. Trust me, I don't give it, goddamn. Neither should you. These American politicians who look like 
American is apple pie to you. They are the foreigners. They are the snakes. They look like you, but they're not you. They don't give a fuck about you. Me? I am an Arab. So what? What other country do I fucking have? Think about it. I was born and raised here. I don't know any other country. I have no other people than the people here. You think I'm different from you? I go to the same gym you fucking go to. I breathe the same air that you do. I live the same life that you do. That's what they'll say. Oh, he's the foreigner. Oh, he's an Arab. Oh, he's a Muslim. And what are they? They're not Americans. They're buddies with the city of London and the British Empire. You can't change your country. You can't change your country. Even if Americans, real Americans, you move to China, you move to Russia, move to Europe, anywhere in the world, you will never change your country. Just like you can't change your mother. Can't change which woman you came out of. So you can't change your country either. You can't. Base. Thank you so much, American partisan. I'd follow you into the darkest valley, Commander. You see, that cuckold, non-compete... American Johnson moved to Vietnam, found some mid woman there, hooked up with her, and now he thinks he's a he's a, a citizen of the world. He ran away from his own country like a coward, ran to Vietnam. He will never be Vietnamese. Not in a million years he'll ever be Vietnamese. Not in a million years. He's just the weakest of us Americans. He is a weak, weak, weak American. The weakest of Americans. Ran from his own country to go play around in another. He will never be Vietnamese. No matter how hard he tries, he will never, never be Vietnamese. Not in a trillion years. Not in a trillion years. Not in a trillion years. You don't know until you're going to know. By the time you really know the meaning of my words and the gravity of my words, it will have been too late. And I promise you that. By the time my words become legible to you, by the time you understand what I'm fucking saying, it will be way too fucking late. And that's a tragedy we can't do anything about. But what you can do is wise up. Wise the fuck up and call a spade a spade. Call a spade a spade. They want to dupe you into a war that will never... Listen. This is going to be our test. If we go to war with China, we must pray for the defeat of the American empire. No matter how many times they call you a traitor, no matter how many times they call you a Chinese shill or a CCP spy, if you don't have the courage to stand up to the pimp who's prostituting your own fucking mother, you will never be a man. And that's what these military authorities who call you up to go die in a war against China are going to do. Oh, you're a traitor. I'm not a traitor. You are not my fucking leader. You are not my fucking leader. You are not America. You are not the leader of this country. You are not what America is.
You are a fucking parasite who hijacked our fucking country so you can use us in a war we have nothing to do with. Let them call you a traitor. Let them call you whatever the fuck they want to. Don't you dare give in to their fake patriotic bullshit, their fake patriotic sentiment. It's all a bunch of bullshit. The bankers can go fight their own fucking war. That's what I say. They can go fight their own fucking war. And they can wave it under their own fucking flag instead of flying ours. Just being in that space made me realize people are so fucking delusional. They don't understand. Oh, this country is authoritarian. You have your head up your fucking ass about the country you're living in. Please tell me how we're a free country. We're not a free country. We're just an incompetent one. Every chance our fucking government gets to control us, they take it. The only freedom we have is based on the incompetence of government. No, think about it. We used to be, we're a free country only when the government just isn't competent enough to fuck with us. Oh, you're going to go target practice in your backyard? Well, you better hope a goddamn state trooper doesn't drive by your fucking house and arrest you for violating some local regulation. Now, if you're living in the boonies, maybe the government's too incompetent to send someone that way. But every chance they fucking get to, to extend their control, they take it. Look what happened with the CCTV cameras. You know, back in the 70s, people used to just get away with whatever the fuck they wanted, right? Why did that change? Because technology changed. So every time our government gets the chance, they go full 1984. This is not a free fucking country. Stop pretending it is. It's not. And it's not a fucking democracy either. It's not a fucking democracy when every four years you get to choose between two people that were either handpicked by the establishment or given clearance by the establishment. And yes, Donald Where Trump is... was given clearance in 2016 oh, only because of the Thanks, deal he bro. made with Sheldon Adelson. Thank you so much, Metal Nick. Appreciate you so much. Americans need a hard... Harsh and brutal truth. Because they're coping like never fucking before. Harsh, harsh truth. That's what we need as a country. Harsh, harsh truth. We are be we're not only run by sadistic monsters. Our government is fucking stupid. It's stupid and incompetent. It's just stupidity. Just just increasing. Stupidity, stupidity, stupidity. You can't save this country. All these people who are saying, oh, this is our destroying our country. You're right, our country is being destroyed. You can't save it, though. Look, even Trump was president for four years. Trump didn't save America because Trump can't save America. That's what MAGA also needs to hear. Trump can't save this fucking country. He was president for four years. What the fuck could he do? Nothing. All he could do was trigger the libs. He had no real power. What fucking power did he have? Nothing. Stop coping. Wake up. Live in reality. Stop coping. We're not the country you think we are. They say, oh, we're wokeifying everything. Really? What do you think democracy and international human rights is? You know who the first woke son of a bitch was? Ronald fucking Reagan when he tried to spread democracy. You think wokeness is the problem? No. Wokeness is a symptom. What the fuck do you think democracy is, huh? Oh, we're going to make this system democratic. Well, does it work better? No. Oh, but, but it's democratic. Oh, but it's like a shithole country. 
that has no functional government, but at least it's democratic, right? Just like how they're, we're going to appoint this POC person. We're going to appoint this trans person. We're going to appoint this woman. They don't care about the results. They just care about some fucking ideology. Yeah, that's what American democracy has always been. Nothing changed. It's just, it got taken to its conclusion. Tell me what period you want to go back to. You want to go back to the 1990s? How it was in the 1990s? I'll tell you what the difference between the 1990s and now is. Time. No, Marxists didn't come and ruin America that you grew up in. It's always been like this. It's just a matter of time. Time and technology. It's always been what this country was. Since after the end of the Second World War. You want to complain about woke shit? Please, tell me more how we should go back to Ronald fucking Reagan. Where, where what? We're going to champion uh, some Mickey Mouse fucking ideology and ignore the basic, sobering, cold, hard facts before us about what reality is? See, Sebastian Gorkuk, who's this fat idiot, this gerbil, this bitch... This bastard, he'll talk all the time about wokeness, but don't you dare ever tell him about how much military aid we should give to Israel. Don't you dare hold his ass to the fire about just why is it in our interest to be a global empire that intervenes in every fucking corner of the world. Oh, he'll complain about the trans bathrooms and shit. Yeah, that's that's peanuts. Even Bill fucking Maher complains about that. That doesn't make you a fucking rebel. Doesn't make you anti-establishment. Even that bitch J.K. Rowling, and she is a bitch, by the way. Nobody remembers that about J.K., by the way. She's a big neocon bitch. That's what J.K. Rowling is. She supports Israel. She claimed Corbyn was an anti-Semite. She supports Zelensky in Ukraine. She hates China. She's a bitch. Believing in two genders is not making you based. Congrats, you're not insane in one sense of the word. Doesn't make you fucking based. How the fuck does that make you based? It doesn't make you based for, for believing in common sense. Why have we lowered the bar so low? We have lowered the bar so low where you're based just because common sense. Now, not enough for me. Not good enough for me. Not good enough for me. Not good enough for me. I just, I just, I just think about it and you know, these people, they're wolf in sheep's clothing and they get away with it because they say all the right fucking words. They may sound like you, but they're not one of you. Let me tell you something. The America of Ronald Reagan deserves wokeness. You want to be the international world police for democracy? You want to fucking impose your values on everyone? You want to expand these global institutions to further American imperialism? Then you deserve to put on a fucking dress, put on nail polish, and start. That's what you deserve, bitch. You dug your grave. Now go sleep in it. <clears throat> It's just justice. It's what you fucking deserve. It's like, you want to build this liberal democratic empire? Then, then why don't you fucking reap your liberal democratic consequences? Because that's all wokeism is. That's all it fucking is. You made your bed, now sleep in it. You made your bed, now sleep in it. Just don't be surprised if you get poked with, you know... 
Don't be surprised if the woman you're sleeping with in that bed pokes you with something you don't recognize. You made your democratic bed. Now go sleep in it. Just don't be surprised if the woman in that bed pokes you with a sharp sharp object. Base. Thank you so much, Killer Astrid. Zionist influence. Nick Fuentes was right. No, it's deeper than that. It's way deeper than that. It's way more than that. You made your bed, now go sleep in it. Just make sure to remember the right pronouns of the person you're sharing that bed with. Don't fucking sit here and complain. You're opening the bed, you sleep in the bed. Woo! What is that? Don't complain. Go back and sleep in that fucking bed. Go back and sleep in that fucking bed you just fucking made, you goddamn son of a bitch. You goddamn son of a bitch. Sebastian Gorka. Get back in that fucking bed. That's the bed you made. You, the free world. You made that fucking bed. You go back and sleep in it. You want the disease? Have the symptom. Go sleep in that fucking bed. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Go back in there, Sebastian. What's wrong? You don't like when institutionalized fanatics and liberal ideologists shove their shit down your throat in the name of equality and democracy? Well, that's what you've been doing around the fucking world for decades, so it's what you deserve at home, too. That's what you deserve, too. It serves you right. Honest, it really just serves you right. There's no other way of spinning it. It really just serves you fucking right. Now, now there's an event I wanted to talk about, and I can't talk about it on YouTube. There's no way I'll be allowed to talk about this on YouTube. And that's just how it is. But uh let me let me talk about this swamp communist idiot, right? So I'll just show this to you. I'm not gonna say anything. Because we really can't talk about this topic. I wanted to say something about this fat bitch, swamp communist. Another fat fucking psycho loser who's uh, declaring war on the American people, alongside Sebastian Gorkuk, two peas in a pod if you ask me. Haas is a tailist Hitlerite who has no faith in the masses, so he tries to appeal to their bigotry rather than their needs. He's a walking stereotype of what the FBI wants a communist to be seen as, regardless of this is by accident or intent. He got about a thousand likes. And then what did I say? I said, oh, it's trending now. Hold on. Is it out? Nope, they're still refusing. They're still refusing to release the manifesto. So a horrible, horrific event happened recently. And, okay, I'll just tell you what happened. And I can't give a spin on this. But LGBT groups were telling Newsweek that they didn't want to publish the manifesto from the perpetrator... Because it should have, it would have serious consequences. So in Nashville, someone who was transgender, Audrey Hale, uh, shot up a school of Christian children. And the manifesto is not being released by the FBI. So we, we're left with guessing about what their motivations were and what their ideology and worldview was that was behind this disgusting act. Now, I was shocked by this, and I shared this, and this fat guy called me a Hitlerite for doing that. He says, I'm a tailist Hitlerite. And I kind of think it's cute, because this person assumes that this isn't really my view, that at the end of the day, I'm one of these progressive leftists. No, Swamp. All of those bad words you call the backward masses, I am more backward than the masses are. I am a Taliban Stalinist. I am more fucking backward 
than the masses. I'm not a tailist. I'm worse than they are. So don't call me a fucking tailist, first of all. This is what I believe with my heart and my soul. I can't tell you it on YouTube, but no, it's what I believe, motherfucker. This is my voice. I want that manifesto to be released. I want people to see the ideology <coughs> that killed Daria Dugina. And I have been warning about it for years. Then he calls me a Hitlerite when one of their co-ideologists just massacred a school full of Christian school children. And I'm the Hitlerite. This person has no self-awareness. You are the Hitlerite, you fat idiot. You are literally the Hitlerite. You are literally the American Azov, an extra-legal terroristic force that is meant to fulfill the terroristic vengeance of finance capital against the masses. That's how Dimitrov defined it. That's how it works in Ukraine, and that's how it's working in America with Antifa and these leftist ideologists. Swamp has this idea that I am trying to dupe the masses because at the end of the day, I'm a communist, right? I'm a communist who has a communist ideology. So all this is just a means to an end to realizing my communism. Swamp, you don't know anything about what Marxism-Leninism is. The content of communism is not defined by some predefined end goal, but by active participation in the actual contradictions that exist here and now, which means I, there's no means to an end. This is the site of the battle. This is the site at which things like communism are to be defined. It's not a tool. It's not in a way of camouflaging yourself and doing entryism into the conservative movement. You take a side in the contradictions as they exist, and that defines the content of what communism is. That's what defines it. There's no deeper truth behind it. Oh, but the deeper truth is, it's a stateless class of society. No, that's a negative description. That is not the positive content of anything. That is a substanceless, meaningless negation that has no positive content. You give it positive content by participating in the contradictions as they exist before you. And when psychopathic murderers and killer clowns are murdering school children being motivated <clears throat> by your ideology i have a responsibility to raise my fucking voice when you hypocritical scumbags are trying to prevent the truth from being released <clears throat> He tries to appeal to their bigotry. If they're bigots, I'm a bigot. That's what you don't fucking understand. I'm not appealing to anything. This is genuinely coming from my soul, from my heart. I am not above these contradictions. I live, breathe, and dwell within them. I am an American living in my country. I am not some cosmopolitan elevated above the country I live in having some secret plan that I'm just using this as a tool for. I am rooted in my country. I am a rooted Stalinist communist, not a Trotskyite. Not a globe-trotting cosmopolitan who thinks they're above their own people. For fuck's sake, the only country I've ever been in outside of America was like Mexico, maybe the Bahamas. I've never even left this country. I don't even have a fucking passport yet. And I need to get one soon because I'm going to Turkey for my fucking hair. He, but this is the one that I, that, that this is the one I, it's just, 
this is the one that's just like zero self-awareness on this guy's fucking part. It's baffling. He is a walking stereotype of what the FBI wants communists to be seen as. Words mean nothing anymore. Hitlerite, and I'm the person who wants... who ser So I'm the guy the FBI wants, and I'm the Hitlerite. The FBI needs to invest 0% of its resources in doing anything relating to communism. Your American communist movement, quote-unquote, has been a dying shithole for decades! You've gotten nowhere! You have gotten nowhere with anything! I'm the guy who's proposing some new shit! Please explain to me how the guy with new ideas, the baseline being complete shithole nothingness, is serving the FBI. Oh, but because you're 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 taking energy away from growing revolutionary momentum. What fucking momentum? Where? Show it to me. Because you're on the fucking street bitching about abortion. I'm the guy the FBI wants. Yeah, the FBI wants communists to be seen as highly relatable, charismatic, funny. Love, great beard, handsome men. And the FBI hates it when communists are fat, disgusting degenerates. And, and, and 1,000 people looked at this, liked it. No self-awareness. No self-awareness. I'm the guy FBI wants to use. Now, how does that make even a little bit of logical sense? You really think that if it wasn't for infrared haze, you'd be what? What would be the state of the American communist movement if I, if I died in the year 2019? Think about it. You, he wants you to believe that something would have changed and I prevented it from happening. Yeah, the FBI loves when the advanced theory of Marxism-Leninism is combined with and and is used to make sense of everyday sensibilities that's what the fbi fucking hates the fbi can't stand it when people like me call them out for withholding the nashville shooters manifesto that's what the fbi loves by the way, I'm the one who has no faith in the masses, but he's running apologetics for the LGBT groups that are telling the authorities to not release it because of the serious consequences. No, motherfucker, I trust the masses. That's why I want the fucking manifesto to be released, dumbass. They're just saying shit that's it's meaningless, it has no self-awareness, and if I brought them on stream and asked them a simple question, hey, Swamp, how is it that I am serving the FBI's interests and not you? And if I just asked him that question, he would not be able to say anything. If I asked him one simple question, hey, Swamp, why would the FBI prefer me over you? Go. What do you think he'll fucking say? Yeah, the FBI hates me. I'm the guy who tried to re-energize the CPUSA to make it a great party. Relevant, powerful, vigorous again. That's what the FBI fears, is a very powerful CPUSA that has ten times the popularity it does now. That's what the FBI fears, right? Well, no, sorry, that's what the FBI wants, right? No, it's what they fear. Why would, what, just, hey, le American leftists, what do you think the FBI is going to shit up? What do you have to offer? Come, show me what you have to offer. What exactly do you think the FBI is doing to shit up?
You think you have anything, you pieces of shit? You rotten scum? You think you have any fucking movement? You think you're you're irrelevant even more than a fucking an ant? The FBI didn't give a sniveling shit about you because you're nothing. You're fucking nothing. You're goddamn cockroaches. You're less than shit on the side of the street. The FBI is more concerned with a crazy raving crackhead on the sidewalk than they are with you. You fucking irrelevant loser. The fuck you? They need to send the FBI. The FBI needs to send Agent Haas to disrupt the American left. What American left? You mean the fucking Democrat volunteer vanguard? But you know what's fucking crazy? It's always people who are like on our side of the aisle who actually are getting raided and arrested by the FBI. Isn't that fucking crazy? Like, LaRouche people are, yeah, they are targeted by the FBI because, big surprise, because they're ties with Russia, China, and other countries. Or what about the Uhuru movement that got raided? Now, they were friends with CPI, and we used to be friends with CPI. It's like, the people that we, like, are somewhat tangentially associated with, those are the guys that actually, like, do get raided by the FBI. You ever notice that? Like, when is the last time the PSL or any of these leftist orgs were fucked with by the FBI. When, you know what I mean? You think the CPUSA right now is being fucked with by the FBI? It's like we have real world examples of how federal agents are targeting us. Like we have examples of that. You know how many fucking infiltrators exist? I literally have stories of agent provocateurs recruiting people from my Discord and those people recruited, they told me everything. Crazy shit. That was literally from an FBI agent. That you wouldn't fucking believe. Trying to tell someone from my Discord to do some crazy shit. And luckily he reported him and he got, he didn't fall for it. He went and told me immediately. He's like, yo, Haas, this person's a fucking glowy telling people to... Dude, I have so many stories of that. You know how many stories of sketchy, fed-like motherfuckers coming to fuck with us? There are a lot. We don't use that label lightly, okay? We don't use that label of a federal agent lightly, but they're swarming our community. More, way more than leftists. You never see them around these leftists. Us... They swarm us. And by the way, when I launch my fucking organization, don't call me an FBI agent. Don't call me a Fed. I will go out of my fucking way. In this organization, anyone who do, does or proposes anything illegal, I will literally report you to the fucking FBI. I will report you to the police, you piece of shit. Because you are... As good as a... And I hope you get caught. I hope it's revealed you're an FBI agent. And the country can see how the FBI provokes Americans to do illegal things. And provokes terrorism. And on YouTube, I can't talk about connections between the FBI and recent events of things that happen. That You know what I mean? Yeah, there's always an FBI connection. This organization we're doing... The things we do will be 100% nonviolent and 100% law abiding. And anyone who tries to do anything illegal, I will personally drag your ass to the fucking police. We will not give the authorities, any excuse to fuck with us. You break the law, then you are wrecking our shit. You're personally my fucking enemy. I will delight in the opportunity.
We live in the same country as anyone else. We're not above the law that your neighbors live under. You want to change the law? Then win the people. But you're not above the law that your neighbors are living under. We're all living under the same laws. Together. Let me continue. And look what he says. Then I mock him for saying this shit about the FBI. He goes, this isn't about the manifesto, and you've never had any concern about mass shooters. No, I haven't had concern about mass shooters in the abstract, but I have had a concern about killer clown leftists who have decided that human life means nothing when it contradicts your ideology. And I've been talking about that for years. And I have the inkling suspicion that this mass shooting is a direct example of that. And you could say, well, what about all the other mass shootings? Well, this is one that you're responsible for. This is one that could have been prevented if not for your murderous, psychopathic ideology. And before you claim you don't partake in it, every single one of you defended the murder of a philosopher's daughter and openly shared the reaction of her father witnessing her daughter, his daughter, die before his eyes. And you made light of that like it was a joke. Don't fucking pretend you are above this. You are this. And I've been pointing out you scum for a long time now. So no, I am not doing tailist. And no, this isn't opportunism to me. I am in the thick of this shit and I have been. You scum have advocated for violence against me. Personally. It's personal, dude. What part of that don't you fucking get? This got personal way too fast for this to be a form of opportunism for me. These people would literally murder you, and me, obviously, if they had the chance. Don't forget that. They say it openly, and it's not just some terminally online shit they're saying. They do it in real life. Look what they did to Dugan's daughter. Look what they do at these schools. Innocent children. If they are willing to attack innocent children... They'll attack you too. Look at this idiot. No results from Haas on mass. Even my t original tweet didn't include the phrase mass shooting. But what is this supposed to fucking prove? That there's no results from me. From this. You think that undercuts the fact that your ideology is murderous and psychopathic? And this is a clear example of that. And if it weren't for that ideology... This disgusting thing wouldn't have happened. I am willing to say that neo-Nazism was culpable in many mass shootings before. Like the one in New Zealand, for example, and others. I would never deny that. But those were neo-Nazis who had ties to Azov in Ukraine. Especially the New Zealand shooter. I will be the first to say neo-Nazism is a murderous and psychopathic ideology. I'm well aware of that. These anime neo-Nazi <clears throat> motherfuckers, yeah, they will kill you. They're psychos. They have no morals. They're nihilists. I've never fucking denied that. I've just objected to the view that every MAGA person is a neo-Nazi. I've objected to the view that all conservatives are neo-Nazis. I will even object to the view that all nationalists are neo-Nazis. Neo-Nazis are neo-Nazis. Are they psychos and murderous psychopaths? Yeah. But you are that too, and that's what you're not getting here. It's two sides of the same fucking coin. You're also subscribing to that shit. Are donos paused? No, they're not. Why? Are there donations I'm missing? I'm looking through the chat. I don't think there's any donations I'm missing.
So that's an important point I wanted to make. Let's see if the space is over yet so we can listen to uh, Sebastian Gorka getting fucking destroyed. Holy fuck, the space is still live. This is like a 24-7 space. And is Gorka there right now? That fat bastard? No, he's not. Wow, the space is still ongoing. That is just baffling. See, I will debate anyone on China. Those people in that space didn't want to fucking debate me. They were really scared to debate me. I'd love to debate some of these people one-on-one -on, -one on China. I'd love to fucking do that. Thank you so much, the king. Appreciate you. Based. These leftoids think anyone who is slightly conservative is a Nazi. They forget how the Nazis also killed conservatives yep, and Christians too. that's what too. they're missing. See, good old-fashioned conservatives are not Nazis. Nazis are criminals. They're lumpen. They're criminal scum used by the state to do what the law can't. That's a big difference. That's exactly what we're seeing, by the way, the world over. Especially in America now and in Ukraine. Samir's in show queue. What for? I'll just bring her on. Hello? Hey, what's up? What's up? How's it going? How's that space? Uh, fine. How's that space? Um, so, uh, Mario, his spaces are interesting. He's usually more neutral and objective, but uh, I think that you just broke their brains by trying to argue that uh, China was not autocratic when it was basically established in their minds. And on that basis, they make the assessment that China... Uh, behaves internationally in a manner that is threatening to the U.S., which I guess was the crux of the argument, correct? Yeah, but I think what they're not realizing, and it's just such a shame because they don't let you speak because they just, you can't, they don't let you hear their worldview get shattered in real time. So they're mm -hmm. actually not in favor of free speech. They, they're pro-censorship <laughs> when it comes to protecting their ideology. But what what is the America they're trying to defend? They're trying to defend an American empire, that in no way coincides with the interests of Americans. So they're saying, oh, China's threatening America on the world stage. Which America? Is it our America or is it the elite's America? Like, what America are what, they talking what about? What they mean by America is the liberal international order that America happens to Yeah, need. and then every day they wake up and start bitching about that same America. And they're blaming, oh, right. well, we're going to blame uh, the Marxists for this. No, these are liberal Americans mm -hmm. who are at the helm, okay? It came from, yeah, I agree, it's the British Empire. It's not necessarily only from America, but this mm -hmm. is a disease that is part and parcel of what you call America. What you call America is an empire that is against the interests of Americans. Yeah, and then they, and, get, and so, the they get so shocked. They say, well, 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 how, well, how is it in the interest of Americans to live under China system? And it's like nobody's talking about China system. Nobody's forcing China system on America. America is the one, quote unquote, who's trying to force their anti-human values and system on the entire world. It's not sustainable. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's projection at the heart of it, right? Because American exceptionalism is something that's been ingrained in their minds, so they automatically assume that China 
once uh, they're on par with the U.S. internationally, that they're going to behave in a way that uh, is similar to how the U.S. behaves internationally right now. Um, I mean, the entire premise of their uh, argument was wrong. Uh, I wouldn't have even gotten into the democracy versus autocracy debate. I, it's just so hard to change the way that they think. I would just rather, you know, like, operate within that framework. Yeah, but, but the problem the problem with these spaces is like they have they have a baseline that's non-negotiable and the non-negotiable baseline is like you have to be on the side of quote unquote democracy. If you start criticizing democracy, if you start saying, "Oh, yeah, actually the quote unquote aut autocracy is better." If you start pointing out that China's system isn't really worse in any way, but it's even better. It's like they're like, "Oh, you're too ridiculous. You're too extreme." It's like, "All right, well, you're supposed to be open to all ideas." And I, they just want an echo chamber, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but the idea that uh, China's internal, quote-unquote, autocratic policies translate on the international level level is totally false. It's bullshit. Um, but you're not going to convince them of that, even though their argument is also, like, crushed when it, comes to the, when it comes to the United States. Yeah, internally, it's a liberal democracy, but that doesn't mean it behaves, quote-unquote, well, I, I don't, democratically. I don't even know what democracy they're talking about. Why Liberal to... democracy. Do you want a definition? I'll give you the well, Biden well, I, definition. No, 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 no. I want to know why any, what are they talking about and why anyone should care about it? Like the average American, yeah. what is democracy? Yeah. Why, why is that important? And they're like, oh, well, it's the thing separating us from being genocided by the government. It's like, you know what? If that's what's preventing <laughs> you from the government destroying you, you're not a free people. You have no sovereignty. You, you don't have a fucking government that gives a shit about you at all. Stop mm -hmm. pretending we have to keep destroying our own freedoms and dignity because all oh, the we're going to be like China. No, we're not. All Americans have to do is stand the fuck up. Stop being pussies. And what are they doing? Yeah. It's, like, it's like we're... Oh, I'm so grateful to the U.S. government for not putting us in camps and, and wiping us out. No, I'm fucking not grateful for them for that. Why are we living like mice? Yeah. Look, I mean, uh, American culture is one of, you know, internal op uh, eternal optimism, right? So it's like, you're not going to be able to make them cynics and have them basically, like, accept that uh, the U.S. is falling and, and we're ushering in is this entire multipolar world, a new economic order. You're not going to convince them of that. So they're coping by, you know trying to pretend America is still a, a global superpower um, and will remain the only global superpower for a while and, uh, you know, try to no, crush my China thing and in Russia. That space, you guys would not fucking yeah. believe it, was how many people were trying to defend the idea that there's no challenge to U.S. hegemony, China's economy is nothing, uh, the U.S. dollar will reign supreme forever, and that the logic was beautiful. They were like, well, if you look right now, the U.S. is still the top dog. So that means there's no challenge to the U.S. empire. And it's going to be uh, just, there's no alternative. It's just going to be the U.S. empire forever. And then I'm thinking, I'm like, this is, I'm a Freudian. I'm a psychoanalyst. So I'm thinking, going through my, like, these are all the, because it's contradictory. Like, on the one hand, they're saying, oh, there's no threats to American hegemony. And they're like, and also, like, China's system is, like, really bad and no one wants it. And it's like, what? so does that mean... We're not going to have the dominance of China? Or does it mean you prefer to not live under China's system? Like, Because you're, you're, on the one hand, you're making it seem like you're giving a neutral description of reality. And then on the other hand, you're giving this normative judgment about what you prefer and think is morally better. And I'm just curious how you link the two. And it's a classic <laughs> Freudian case, symptom, of repression and trauma. They cannot accept that the American empire is fucking done for. And in an extremely pathological way that I would give as a clinician, a clinical analysis of, they are coping to the extreme. Like yeah. they are blatantly in denial of the reality before them. That stock trading guy, that international crypto guy, he's like a finance guy. I couldn't believe that this guy... Well, apparently is it it does a business around the whole world was talking the way he did it's like this guy's like not living in reality he's like living in an alternative universe like an alternative reality trying to cope with the fact that yeah america's done it's been done the battle's been lost a long time ago 
you know, you can you can talk about how, oh, okay, what's going to happen after? It doesn't matter. The thing we have now is dead. It, the battle's fucking right. lost. The only question is how are we going to respond? Are we going to go peacefully or are we going to exactly. try and there take everyone down with us? One, convince them that uh, the existence of, you know, multiple world powers is not, uh, on par with the U.S. isn't a threat. That's, you know, we can do that. Um, and then we also have to tailor our message depending on which audience we're speaking to. I think that this was a variety of, you know, um, Yeah, but I was, just, I was disappointed ideologies. because they were silencing me. Yeah. They barely gave me an opportunity to speak. Especially when it came to the fucking pushback. Like, I was being timed. I got, like, nine seconds to speak. And then everyone piles in and intervenes and speaks over me. And that's such a shame. I want to debate these people where there's not going to be a moderator muting me. Or one-on-one. -on -one. I will debate 1v5, no problem. But I actually want to debate these people. It seems like they're scared to debate. And my that fat rat piece of shit, obese fuck Sebastian Gorkuk... Talked all this shit while I was muted. I couldn't speak. All this jibber jabber, throwing all these insults. This this piece of shit. Yeah. This scum piece of shit, Sebastian Gorkuk. That motherfucker in a one v one debate. I would end his career. He would never show his face in public again. And he was talking all this. Oh, this guy's a clown. He was brought in as a clown. Thank you so much, Not all Americans though. believe the lies of the warmongers. And yeah, I mean, look, the lies that, they've that guy is Thank just you so much, Lone Star. Thank you so much, PJ. The death of American history. Yeah, I mean, that guy is just uh, and you a neocon larping as Naga, really. Exactly, PJ. Yeah, Sebastian Gorkuk was talking shit against me. Oh, this guy's a clown. Oh, you just brought him here for entertainment. You British fuck! Go back to fucking Britain! Who's the clown? I was born in this fucking country. You mocking bitch. Shut the fuck up. You don't even speak American. You don't even fucking speak American. What the fuck are you saying, you arrogant powdered wig fat fuck? You fat fuck powdered wig bitch. The fuck are you speaking down to? You fat obese fuck. He's this powdered wig arrogant fat lard. Acting like he's MAGA, can't even speak plain American English and have a fucking conversation. Oh, you are just lacking credibility. <laughs> You're just a clown. He didn't address anything I fucking said. I'm a fucking American. I would chew that guy and spit him out. That fucking pussy. He's got to rely on fucking censorship. See, that motherfucker fears the spirit of 1776. He fears the tide of MAGA overwhelming the powdered wig. I can't even say the shit I want to say on YouTube. <laughs> He's powdered wig Pierre's Morgan. Oh, I'm just so interested in intervening on him. You know why these fucking British politicians and ideologists love fucking and meddling in our fucking affairs? Because they think we're the same as them. And we're not! We don't eat beans for breakfast. We don't, we're nothing like you. Stay on your fucking island and fuck off and leave us alone. Because <laughs> they think, because they think that they're just like us and they know us. They think they understand the American psych, that they understand the American mind, and they don't understand anything. And I'm not going to your country and claiming to know everything about you people and bossing you around. Fuck if I'm going to go to the UK and start telling people what to do. That's your country. You have a right to it. Stop coming to America and speaking down to the sons of the soil here. Like you understand us because you don't. We don't do what you fucking do. We have very little in common. Our sense of humor, nothing in common. Our taste, our food. Fish and chips? I'm sorry, that's just fucking lazy. You're just frying some food, and then you have fries. We fry everything. We fry fucking alligator. We have alligator and chips. Or it's like to, we like to call them fries. That's not a national dish. That's not culture. That's just fried food. We have southern food. It's fried. We fry everything. 
We don't make a big deal out of it. We don't pretend this is fine gourmet dining. We don't arrogantly say, oh, yeah. And then what else do you have? Indian food. Congratulations, okay? We are not the UK, Sebastian Gorka. I don't know who the fuck you are, where you came from. We don't have your queen. We don't have your king. We don't have any of that fucking stupid, stupid ceremonial bullshit you have. You need to understand the country you're in. Coming here, repping the label MAGA and America first. While you sound like a powdered wig aristocrat. Look what this guy said about Julian Assange. I'll play you the audio of what this motherfucker said about Julian Assange. This guy's sitting in Britain. Teenager, I think at the age of 13 or 14, he broke into the FBI's computer system. Uh, a very smart, but also a very... Listen to this, guys. Very deranged. This individual. is how he sounds. He, with somebody who you may... Look at this. ...have heard of before. He published a treasure trove of information publicly on his WikiLeaks site. Cla so he's got all these stickers trying to LARP and blend in with Americans, but you're not a fucking American. Classified information that he had acquired from an army intelligent analyst who now goes by the name of Chelsea. This sounds like the spiffling Brit, and he's going to give us a fucking money hack for how to hack Skyrim for unlimited money. See, what was his real name? What's Chelsea? If you did that, I want to be mad at you. But you're pretending to be something you're not. See Manning's name. We'll just call him Private Manning because I don't care how many steroids or how many uh, estrogen pills you take. Your chromosome. Okay. Nobody gives a fuck. D communications <laughs> with rules of engagement with the names of personnel and assets in Afghanistan and Iraq. Now, don't misunderstand me. If you've listened to this show for nigh on three years- Oh, please don't misunderstand me. I'm one of you, MAGA people. I'm one of you. As you know. Haas, I don't think, I don't think he's affiliated with Trump anymore because of his Nazi ties. No, he ties. pretends to be, he pretends to be. The, despite yeah. having a background in national security, working for the Defense Department myself for more than five years, working in the White House for President Trump. I know the deep state is real. You are the deep state, you dumb fuck. And I have spoken out on the deep state many, many times. Not an accomplishment. You're a wolf in sheep's clothing and a liar. Times ...on the threat it poses to all of our freedoms. But WikiLeaks was founded by Julian Assange on one principle, and you need to understand this when somebody defends him to you. WikiLeaks was based... I'm totally... Guys, listen, I'm totally one of you. I'm totally against the deep state. I'm totally not a shill. I'm totally not a neocon like those other people. But listen, now that I've got your trust, yeah, Julian Assange is bad. Mm -hmm. WikiLeaks is bad. Can we be MAGA who are, you know, against Julian Assange, even though he exposed Clinton's emails? Because he's bad. He's bad. I'm one of you. I'm against the deep state. But I shill for them on every concrete, tangible issue, but I give it a different spin to make it sound like I'm not a shill, even though I am. Like, listen, I am not a shill of the deep state, but we need to fund Israel. I'm not a shill for the deep state, but we need to fund the color revolutions in Hong Kong and in China. I'm not a deep state shill, it's just that I agree with the deep state on every issue that is of relevance to preserving and reproducing the power of the deep state. See, I'm not a deep, I'm not, I, I am aware of the deep state, but I also suck the cock of the deep state in every tangible issue. And the argument he makes, he's going to say, see, WikiLeaks doesn't believe in secrets. And that's ridiculous. Why don't you tell people your bank pin code? No, dumb fuck. WikiLeaks doesn't believe in state agencies and globalist institutions that are nowhere to be found in the u.s constitution exercising authority based on lies 
They don't believe in your lies, Sebastian Gore Cuck. And that's why Julian Assange is a hero for publishing the things you've tried to sweep under the rug that contradict your lies. You fucking lying fat ass. Know the difference, Sebastian Gore Cuck. Check what I sent you in He's Discord DM. He's scared shitless of me. This guy will never fucking debate me. This arrogant fuck. This guy will never fucking debate me. Not in a million years. Um. Look at this. Look at this. Typical Azov. This is the Azov supporter. Look at this. Sebastian Gore Cuck wears medal of Hungarian Nazi collaborators. He was wearing the medal of Hungarian Nazi collaborators. Typical tool of the British Empire. We all know the British Empire was behind all this shit. Typical tool of the fucking British Empire. Sebastian Gore Cuck with the Hungarian Nazi fucking regalia. You Azov bitch. No wonder he wants us to go to a nuclear war with Russia and China. He's trying to do what Hitler couldn't. Sebastian Gore Cuck. Sebastian Gore Cuck. Sebastian Gore Cuck. You run from me like I'm a fucking dragon, you little bitch. I will roast your ass in a debate. Let it be known. I want a 1v1 debate with Sebastian Gore Cuck. And we can have it in person anywhere, anytime in America. And we can have it in person. And let's see if this motherfucker can hold his own. Against infrared Hazel Dean, the motherfucker you tried to disrespect in a Twitter space. Let it be known. I'm gonna make a tweet about it right now. I want you guys to boost it. Uh, make sure to tag him, even though he's be blocked you. Known. What's his shit? Sebastian Gorka. What's his shit? Let it be known. I challenge Sebastian Gorka to a debate, one v one, anywhere, anytime. And even in person. This arrogant British comes to our country pretending to be a real MAGA. I will expose you in front of the world and in a debate on China. Don't run, coward. He's blocked a lot of uh, right-wingers as well. He's not open to having conversations with people he disagrees with, to my knowledge. I just fucking made the tweet. Yeah, let me retweet so he gets the notification. He's probably going to block me, I just made that though. tweet. I just made that tweet. Spread the word. Let it be known. Let it be known and spread the word. Um, so what did you think of the other speakers that you spoke with? I think Prodigal was making a good argument regarding, you know, the yeah, downfall like of the Prodigal US. Before, I didn't like him. I remember I didn't like him before. But me and Prodigal were tag teaming these fucking people, that British guy. So that was two Americans versus the British. That's how I saw it. Me and Prodigal saw eye to eye. When we were talking about, you know, we don't agree on China necessarily, but we both agree on the decline of the U.S. empire. We both understand it perfectly. And lo and behold, because me and Prodigal are both Americans. You know what I mean? We're both Americans, so we have an American mentality. We're not British people who are living in the Stone Ages who have this fucking idea that, oh, the British empire is eternal. No, it's fucking not. You can't have a dollar backed by nothing. For some reason, it's hard to understand that for some people. It's got to be backed by some meat and potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Sebastian Gorka blocked me, if you don't know. Yeah, uh, he has a lot of people blocked. But yeah, Prodigal is cool. I interact with him in spaces pretty often, and he's fairly reasonable to talk to. Uh, we're not going to agree on China ever. But I accept that as long as he understands, you know, 
uh, the basic like state of affairs at the moment. And he understands that yeah. the U.S. is declining, but he's very intelligent. He knows a lot. And uh, I think it's a good thing for you to team up with him in case. Yeah, I, I like, I, and that I didn't like it before for some reason because we got into it. But in this debate, I did. I, I preferred him over everyone else. Not gonna lie. Yeah, he actually knew what he was talking about. Whereas yeah, it, you know true. the other crypto guys were just like talking out of their asses. Those crypto guys <laughs> were talking jibber jabber nonsense. They didn't know anything yeah. they were talking about. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But anyway, I got a. Yeah, yeah, I think you should listen to the space, but thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Good luck for next time. Bye-bye. Based. Thank you so My main much. reservation about China is that I don't see how they overcome their demographic issue. Not sure if it came up. But yeah, it's, that's a country everybody's facing. That's an issue everyone's facing right now, you know? But, you know, look, we don't have to sit here and pretend China's got everything solved. We just have to recognize our system's destroyed, you know? That's all we have to understand. Maybe China won't be the next great... I just think they will, but even if they don't, this shit is definitely not sustainable. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, and also you got to think about this. A more organized country, and if you have a civilization with roots, you're way more likely to survive the demographic crisis, you know? You're way more likely to be able to reverse the trend and somehow have a pro-natalist policy. You know, I'm just trying to say, China's got a very pro-natalist <coughs> policy, you know? And the problem is that in America and in Western countries and in Japan and South Korea, you have this dominant ideology of like, oh, let's not have any kids because of climate change. And... You know, that doesn't, it certainly doesn't help, you know. It helps to at least be pro-natalist, which we are definitely not as a country. We are definitely not. All right, guys. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. Beautiful stream. High energy stream. I'm glad to report the decline of Sebastian Gore. Cuck! I'm going to stream tomorrow as early as possible. Possibly on Rumble. I'm not sure. Because there's things I want to report, very mysterious things, I definitely can't talk about on YouTube. Okay, so, you know, you know, yeah, uh, so that, that'll be, it, either way, I'll try to do an early stream, I kind of want to just start streaming super early, like at 4, like at 4 p.m. EST, even earlier, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I just think I should be an early streamer, like stream four to 10 p.m., right? Six hours. That'll be a nice stream. Anyway, guys, good stream. I'll see you later.
But I'm working really hard on hats and stuff. I got some. Okay, the hats are probably going to be out tomorrow, I think. Uh, let me check. Let me check. They're not going to be out tomorrow. Holy fuck, no. I mean, they're going to be... Uh, I'm going to have the sample, an image of the sample tomorrow, maybe. And then when that gets shipped to me, probably a week later... But I did settle on white, at least for the sample. So I'm going to get that sample. And then if it's not going to be white, it's going to be gray. There's a kind of gray color. And if I don't like gray, it's going to be black. I don't want to do black. I don't want to do black. But that's kind of a last resort. You know, it's kind of definitely a last resort type of thing. Guys, uh, like my tweet. Mods, please spam the tweet in the chat. Like my tweet, guys. And let me actually put this on the announcements. So let's go ahead and uh, boost the shit out of this tweet. All right, guys. I'll see you. I'll see you later. Bye, bye. See you guys later. Beautiful night. Beautiful night. See you guys.